All right, navigators, welcome to Wednesday night Bible stations. Let's begin by doing our pledges. So everyone stand up nice, tall, and straight. Let's look to the flags, wait for the command, and repeat after me. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Stay standing. We're going to have the music portion of our program, and we'll be right back in a moment with the lesson. Oh 
All right, take your Bibles to the book of Ruth, chapter number 2. Book of Ruth, chapter number 2. We've got a few more lessons dealing out of the book of Ruth on our Wednesday night lessons. And the topic and the title for tonight's lesson is Boaz. Boaz, the Avenger. Boaz, the Avenger. In Ruth, chapter 2, verse number 1, it says, And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. The first time we see Boaz in Scripture, the first time we read his name, he is described as a mighty man of wealth. A mighty man of wealth. What do we need to take from this? He is able. Boaz is able. And what this able man, this able kinsman, we're going to see as we go through the, through the story, and we'll be looking at the highlights from Boaz to see how Boaz behaves and acts as the avenger or the redeemer, the kinsman redeemer. First we see his investigation, Boaz in his investigation. Chapter 2, verse number 5. Then Boaz said unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? Whose damsel is this? And his servant says it's Ruth the Moabitess of the house of Elimelech, Naomi's daughter-in-law. So he investigates, who is she? Who is this woman? And he gives an invitation. After the investigation, Boaz gives an invitation. Chapter 2, verse number 8, Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my handmaids. Verse number 14, and Boaz said unto her, Ruth, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left. His invitation. He, didn't, he inquired. He just didn't ignore her. He inquired. He investigated. Who is she? She's a stranger. I don't recognize her. Who is she? Who does she belong to? And the invitation, it did not matter to Boaz that she was a Moabite. It did not matter to Boaz that she grew up worshiping heathens and worshiping idols and eating of strange meats and offering strange offerings. She came back with Naomi. She wanted to come to the land of promise. She wanted to come to the land where Jehovah God had brought bread to his people. He did not mind her being a Moabitess. What he knew is that she was of the house of his kinsman, Elimelech. So his invitation, he says, don't go anywhere else. You can get all you need right here. Come eat at the table. Don't go sit off in a corner by yourself. You don't have to eat on the porch. You don't have to go out and sit away. You come eat and be amongst us. So he makes an investigation. He gives an invitation. Next, Boaz provides a provision. Chapter 2, verse number 14, we just read, and Boaz, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed. Verse number 15. And when she has risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. Verse number 16. And he continued, And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. Boaz's provision, he provided her parched corn at the table, at the meal, and then she left to glean to continue her work for the day, and he said, don't let her work in behind everyone else. Let her work right in the middle, right in the action. When the men are going through with the sickles and the tools and cutting the wheat by fistfuls, he said, let her glean wheat, even with them. She don't have to wait for stuff to fall and to be picked up. You don't have, she don't have to wait. She's not going to get the short end. She's not going to get the morsels and the few pieces that fall from my table. He reached her from his own plate, parched corn. He let her glean even among the sheaves, the fresh cut grains of the harvest. And he says, and every once in a while, one of those handfuls that you cut, that you reap, lay it down. A whole handful of fresh grain and new grain, lay it fall. Handfuls of purpose for her and reproach her not. We go to chapter 3, verse number 11, and we see Boaz makes a promise. Chapter 3, verse number 11, Boaz said, And now, my daughter, fear not. 
I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. He made her a promise. I will do all. So he made a promise. He investigates. He invites. He provides. And he makes his promise. I will. It's as good as done. We'll see that he keeps his promise. And we'll see that he will do all that is required. Now our next to last point is the challenge. Boaz the avenger makes a challenge. Go to chapter 4, verse number 1. Then went Boaz up to the gate and set him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by. So there was a nearer kinsman than Boaz. But Ruth had been back. We'd already reaped the barley harvest. She has not been redeemed. Elimelech's land has not been redeemed. Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of his son, Elimelech's son, had not been redeemed. The work had not been done. The chore had not been taken care of. Somebody, a near kinsman, was neglecting his legal, biblical obligation to his kinsman, to his family, to his fellow man. And it was left undone. And Boaz was doing as much as he could, but he could not do the work of the kinsman. For there was a near kinsman. And he challenges him, and he said, Ho to such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. He challenges him. He says, there is a portion to be redeemed, the land to be redeemed. Will you redeem it? And he said, yes, of course, I'll redeem the land. I want the land. I'll buy the land. I like the extra fields, the extra opportunity for growth and economics. And he said, well, when you redeem that land of Elimelech's from the hand of Naomi, you must redeem the hand of Ruth the Moabitess for our dead kinsman, her husband, our brother, who had died in the land of Moab, you must redeem her also. But the man did not want to do that. He had refrained from doing that. He said, I don't want a Moabitess. I don't want to mar my own inheritance by bringing in a Moabite to my family. He was willing to take the land, but unwilling to take the hand of the damsel. So Boaz challenged him, buy it for thee. And if thou will not buy it, then step aside, get out of the way, and I will buy it. I will do everything that is required. And that is the last point from our lesson today, the redemption of Boaz. Chapter 4 and verse number 9. After this transition was completed, And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, Ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilion's and Malon's of the hand of of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren, and from the gate of his place ye are witnesses this day. He threw down the gauntlet, and he made the challenge. He confronted a neglectful kinsman, and he said, if you're not going to do it, then unobligate yourself, get out of the way. I am able, I am willing, I have promised, I will do. And in chapter 4, he buys all the land. Chapter 2, verse number 1, describes him as a mighty man of wealth. He is able, he is strong, and he is well supportive. He can buy everything. And he just not was able to buy everything. He wanted, he desired to buy everything. He just didn't want half or the stuff that was maybe better, or the stuff that appeared to be a bit more uh, palatable to the other kinsmen, he says, no, the land and the maid. I will buy all. I have paid it all. You are my witnesses. He's out of the picture. I will do all. I have purchased all. It is mine. And Boaz is a type of Christ in the Old Testament. Jesus is able. He is willing. He has promised. He has made a challenge, and he has won the victory. The true Redeemer has provided, paid, and purchased. We need to leave the land of Moab, come to the land of promise, to his house, to his table, to his family. You are wanted. There is a place for you that has been made. Come.
All right, thank you for joining us for the lesson. A few announcements before we leave. Don't forget, this coming Sunday and next week, you have a few more days to turn in your project from Sunday Chapel. You need to draw your picture of the Apostle Paul preaching or teaching to the church at Rome. You can turn that in at Sunday morning worship, or you can put it on the Navigator Facebook page, and we'll work on getting you your prize to you if you choose to do it that way. And Wednesday night, from this lesson, is the project for Wednesday night battle stations. I want you to draw a picture of Boaz as the avenger, the hero, the rescuer, Boaz rescuing Ruth, redeeming the hand of Ruth.